Hello everybody. Our lecture today is ultrasound imaging features of superficial soft tissue masses. Here are some examples of superficial soft tissue masses and its characters on imaging by ultrasound. Lipoma Lipomata are the most common soft tissue masses. Usually their location is subcutaneous, intramuscular and intrafascial lipomas. It rarely occurs in the deep soft tissue. Subcutaneous lipomas are most frequently found in the trunk, shoulder, neck and upper arm, with a predilection for the extensor surface, but they are unusual in the hand and foot. Superficial lipoma manifests itself usually as a compressible, palpable, slowly growing, painless soft tissue mass, not adhered with the overlying skin. The less common deep lipomas occur most commonly in the chest wall and deep soft tissue of the hands and feet. It can be solitary as well as multiple and are usually painless. They are commonly encapsulated with well-defined borders. It is usually a well-circumscribed, composed of mature adipose tissue, not distinguishable histologically from normal fat. A significant proportion have ill-defined borders blending imperceptibly with the surrounding subcutaneous fat, and require comparison with the contralateral side to detect possible asymmetry of fat tissue. It occurs more frequently in obese persons. There is no clear sex predilence, and are more common in the 5th and 6th decades. On ultrasound they are usually slightly hyperechoic in comparison with the adjacent fat. However echogenicity varies and iso and hypoechoic patterns are seen depending on the degree of connective tissue and other reflective interfaces within the mass. The most frequent sonographic appearance of lipoma is that of an elliptical, homogeneous and well-defined mass parallel to the skin surface, containing multiple echogenic lines without internal vascularization. Although lipomas are well vascularized, this feature may not be readily apparent on ultrasound owing to vascular compression caused by the distended adipocytes. Most lipomas are avascular on Doppler imaging a finding that enhances the confidence in characterizing them as a benign mass. Subcutaneous lipomata are usually compressible with the probe, however deep-seated lipomas can be non-compressible and in some cases MRI is necessary for further assessment, especially for sizable masses larger than 10 cm. This is a hyperechoic lesion within the subcutaneous tissues, without any vascularity, consistent with a subcutaneous lipoma. Note the parallel to the skin axis of the lesion. In this picture although the long axis imaging is suggestive of an intrafascial lipoma, the short axis imaging proves the intramuscular location of the lesion. This image shows a large intramuscular lipoma of the distal biceps with mild vascularity. Same patient with previous picture. D1, W and STIR sequences clearly show the lipomatous nature of the lesion. This is an intrafascial lipoma without abnormal vascularity located at the antecubital fossa. At the long axis view the hyperechoic bands of the fascia surrounding the mass are more obvious. Patient presented with clinical evidence of anterior interosseous nerve compression syndrome. X-ray, US and MRI images revealing a deep-seated lipoma deep to the anterior compartment of the forearm most likely compressing the anterior interosseous nerve. Baker's cyst Baker's cysts are located in the medial aspect of the popliteal fossa and appear on ultrasound as anechoic, well-defined cystic masses with smooth and rounded margins and often with obvious origin between the medial head of the gastrocnemius and the semimembranosus tendon and a communicating neck with the knee joint. Complicated Baker's cyst, for example, prior hemorrhage or synovitis may demonstrate heterogeneous secotexture secondary to debris, thickened synovium, septations and echogenic loose bodies. Ruptured Baker's cysts demonstrate an irregular usually pointed caudal margin with hypoechoic fluid tracking along the distal soft tissues. 
Usually the cyst itself is not demonstrated and only the distally tracking fluid is the only evidence of a ruptured Baker's cyst. Baker's cyst. Longitudinal and transverse and images show a well-defined cystic lesion originating between the semimembranosus tendon and the tendon of medial head of the gastrocnemius. Thin septations, mild wall thickening and few internal echoes are noted. Ganglion cysts Ganglions are cystic lesions filled with gelatinous fluid. Ganglion cysts can occur at various locations as the wrist, hand, ankle, foot, elbow, knee, shoulder, hip. The wrist and hand are more commonly affected. They are usually located near, and in some cases communicating with, a joint or tendon sheath. The origin of these masses is uncertain. The dorsal wrist ganglion is the most common hand soft tissue mass and is located superficially to the scaphalunate ligament. Volar ganglion cysts of the wrist are commonly located at the radial aspect of the wrist, originating usually from the scaphotrapezium joint and extending between the radial artery and the flexor carpi radialis tendon. Tendon sheath ganglion cysts are mobile stiff masses arising from the visceral layer of the tendon sheath. Ultrasound shows a well-defined, anechoic soft tissue structure with posterior acoustic enhancement. It may be loculated and contain, in a large lesion, multiple internal septations. No internal flow on color Doppler sonography is noted with ganglion cysts. Anechogenicity, posterior acoustic enhancement, and sharp delineation cannot always be demonstrated in a small cyst. The wall is usually thin and regular. In recurrent or long standing lesions, a thicker wall and intramural echoes can be visualized. Ultrasound offers the advantage, over other imaging techniques, that it can differentiate a small, compressible joint effusion from a small ganglion cyst which does not collapse under compression. Aspiration followed by a short immobilization period is one method of conservative treatment. Volar ganglion transverse and longitudinal. Grayscale and Doppler images demonstrate the relation of the ganglion cyst with the radial artery and the flexor carpi radials tendon as well as with the distal radius and the scaphoid bone. Transverse and longitudinal grayscale and Doppler images demonstrate a well-defined cystic lesion without internal vascularity at the level of the mid-phalanx, abutting the flexor tendon sheath. Tendon sheath ganglion. Bursitis Bursa are small fluid-filled sac lined by synovial membrane, which are found in an anatomically predisposed location. Their function is to avoid friction between two adjacent structures, and in normal conditions contain a small amount of lubricating, mucinous fluid. On ultrasound, the normal bursa contains minimal anechoic or hypoechoic fluid measuring less than 2 mm in thickness, surrounded by hyperechoic bursal walls and paraburcel fat interfaces. Bursitis is an inflammation of a bursa, usually due to chronic mechanical friction and results in abnormal accumulation of fluid. However, it can be caused by a variety of systemic disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis, gout, hydroxyapatite and calcium pyrophosphate deposition diseases and can also appear under septic conditions. Superficial bursitis appears clinically as a painless slump, due to fluid distension or hypertrophy of the synovial membrane. When bursitis is secondary to infection or gout, bursal swelling is typically painful and associated with skin warmth and erythema due to local inflammatory changes. Bursitis appears in ultrasound as a well-defined hypoechoic structure of variable echogenicity. In a simple bursitis, there may be just anechoic fluid, with or without seta. In chronic bursitis, frequently there is bursal wall thickening, with internal debris of variable echogenicity. The echogenic contents may even mimic a solid mass.
bursitis usually presents as a localized fluid collection and synovial wall hypertrophy within a distended bursa that might show real-time fluctuation with transducer probe pressure and posterior acoustic enhancement. Soft tissue hyperemia is often recognized with Doppler studies as accompanying feature. Sizable swelling overlined the olecranon. Transverse grayscale and Doppler images of olecranon bursitis. The olecranon bursa appears thickened, with effusion and increased vascularity. Grayscale and Doppler images of a lobulated fluid collection, with increased peripheral vascularity underlying the distal biceps tendon. Bicipitoradial bursitis. Ultrasound and MRI images show distended bicipitoradial bursa surrounding the distal biceps tendon. Longitudinal and transverse grayscale and Doppler images demonstrate marked thickening of the prepatellar bursa with a small fluid collection and slightly increased vascularity. Prepatellar bursitis. Foreign bodies granulomata. Foreign bodies are in general traumatic or after therapeutic procedures. They are usually fragments of wood, plants, plastic, suture material or metal that can be found in the subcutaneous tissues. Suture granulomas may occur after a surgical intervention in which non-absorbable stitches are used. Foreign bodies usually present as reflective structures, with posterior acoustic shadowing or reverberation artifact. Depending on their nature, these tumor-like lesions usually develop slowly and may cause only vague symptoms or remain asymptomatic for many years. However, sometimes the echographic study may be asked as an emergency for the localization of the foreign body, due to a continued pain after a specific episode remembered by the patient. Many foreign bodies are readily apparent on radiographs and plain radiography is the initial imaging modality for the initial workup to identify and localize them. However wood, plastic and glass may be very difficult to detect on it and that is the reason why sonography is playing an increasing role, since it can be the most sensitive modality to detect non-opaque foreign bodies. The appearance of foreign bodies varies depending on the composition, shape and site of the fragment. Echogenic foci with shadowing or reverberation is typically seen. A hypoechoic halo of granulation tissue, edema, or hemorrhage surrounding the fragments is usually present with hypervascular pattern seen at color Doppler imaging which reflects neovasculature. Grayscale and Doppler images a hyperechoic metallic foreign body is seen, with resulting inflammatory mass with increased vascularity. Abscesses Abscesses are irregular, commonly hypoechoic collections on ultrasound, containing a variable amount of echogenic debris, pus. Fluid fluid levels can be seen. Depending on their content they can appear echogenic but a slight pressure with the probe displaces the echogenic fluid and confirms their cystic nature. Doppler imaging shows increased blood flow within the abscess wall and the surrounding tissues. U.S. guided aspiration may be required both for diagnosis and to aid the correct choice of antimicrobial therapy. Grayscale and Doppler images of abscess in cellulitis at the posterior elbow. Note the thick septations and the internal echoes. Enlarged lymph nodes Enlarged lymph nodes can present like superficial lumps. They usually appear on ultrasound as oval solid hypoechoic masses with a central hyperechoic hilum and hilar vascularity demonstrated in Doppler. If the echo texture of the nodule is preserved and hypervasculature is noted, an inflammatory lymphadenopathy may be suspected. Grayscale and Doppler images of a well-defined, hypoechoic lesion in a patient with lymphadenitis, consistent with enlarged inflamed lymph node. Note the central vessel at the hilum. Our lecture will be continued in the next video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.